Hey, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Niels. Hello. Hi, uh, I'm Niels. Um, I'm uh, a consultant based in the Netherlands. I've recently joined the, the group of MVPs. And uh, I'm a technology professional in the, based in the Netherlands, 30 years old. Um, I like to play chess, uh, play games, uh, ride my bike. Um, yeah, all that kind of thing. I have a passion for, uh, for the Microsoft Cloud Technologies, of course. Uh, that's why I became a Microsoft MVP. And um, yeah, let's go from there. Um, What's what your focus area for uh, of MVP? Enterprise mobility. So, enterprise uh, mobility, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the, uh, the Azure Virtual Desktop space and the automation space. And we build and uh, con- uh, yeah, um, manage uh, cloud cloud proposals for, for our customers based in the Netherlands. So yeah, um, I'm focused on the Windows 10 Autopilot and Azure Virtual Desktop and management by infrastructure as code or Nerio or um, yeah, like that. I'm nominated by uh, Bas van Kaam. Do you know Bas van Kaam? I do not. He is also an MVP in, in Android Prize Mobility. He is a CTO for Nerdio, uh, which is the uh, yeah automation uh, like uh, uh, skin you can use. Uh, so it's GUI, GUI based, but yeah, I'm more like an infrastructure of code guy. So we use both to fully manage Azure. Um, yeah, uh, infrastructure of code automation uh, with really the new mindset with cloud technologies in mind to uh, be able to create a perfectly performing uh, environment for our customers. Well, I know that it's a, it's a, it's a growing area, uh, especially yeah. within the MVP program. Uh, so I think that over the last uh, two months, you're, I think, the, my fourth or fifth enterprise mobility MVP that I've interviewed. Uh, and so I know that it, it's always kind of a leading indicator with Microsoft of where they're seeing growth and where their emphasis is. Mm-hmm. Um, like, so I'm an office apps and services MVP, which has been historically, it's been the largest category. If you think about it, you know, all of the products that are the office products. And then you have SharePoint and Teams and Yammer and OneDrive and kind of all of that in one giant bucket. But within that category, you have people that are very focused on SharePoint, very focused on, you know, uh, their Excel MVPs, PowerPoint MVPs, OneNote MVPs that are all bucketed within that. But uh, again, when Microsoft is expanding in new areas, like we see just the suddenly this, influx of new enterprise mobility like there's a lot that's happening in that space yeah of course uh, they, they, it has a lot to do with covid it has a lot to do with covid of course the winners time the winners 10 autopilot proposition uh landed in exactly the right spot just before covid hit uh, it became uh mature so you could really deploy your machines via the hrd joint model and you could um yeah really uh, let your uh, service your home from home working users to yeah. be able to uh, yeah to service them with all they need and if they need new new applications or deploy new apps or anything like it you could service them from home yeah it's it's perfect yeah really well planned it, if you think about it <laughs> well, yeah, well I, so I said there's a reason why Microsoft stock has been soaring and <laughs> and so many it's like throughout uh, the the pandemic uh, in multiple areas across this ecosystem where I, you know, I talk to people like in the collaboration space that I work, like there's nobody out of work. Like everybody, like I never saw a slowdown in business in, in, in client work that happened before I joined my current company at point. But what was kind of your, uh, your, your path into, into the role and your path to into, becoming an MVP? Uh, my role uh, started, uh, well, it started with Bas van Kam, and he is an MVP already uh, for a couple of years. And he uh, asked me to present uh, at, a, at a local event and uh, to speak about Windows 10 Autopilot. And it was in the uh, late 2018, early 2019, when Windows 10 Autopilot was really new. And we were, we were doing this with, uh, for our customers. And this customer had a really SaaS based application landscape. So it was really well fit to be the first uh, Windows 10 Auto- Autopilot users. So I have uh, done a deep dive into Windows 10 Autopilot and presented about it, what were the possibilities. And it was just when you could uh, first deploy a Windows a Win32 app 
via Intune. It was that was in private preview, and then that's when when I presented about it. So um, yeah, I got a lot of energy from that, and got a lot of positive feedback, and people helped me and uh, engaged me with uh, why don't you start a blog? So I started the blog writing about autopilot and you get more and more feedback. People from all over the world send you emails. Could you please help me with this or that or starting answers on TechNet and uh, yeah, getting a lot of positive feedback. Some people send me an email just to thank me for writing my blog and explaining the techniques used and how you could uh, yeah, deploy an app or deploy a shortcut or deploy an, uh, a custom icon for a shortcut, all that kind of thing and deploy uh, Windows Update policies. And yeah, that, that's that's my path to MVP. So it started two and a half years ago. And uh, I've been blogging. I uh, have started a user group with, uh, with some other MVPs. And about uh, that's the Dutch uh, Azure Virtual Desktop user group. And so it's about Azure Virtual Desktop, of course. And yeah, there we have a lot of speakers from Microsoft. And because in the uh, Dutch based community, uh, end use computing via service based computing. Uh, solutions is really big. Citrix is really big here. And everybody's looking towards uh, Azure Virtual Desktop since it's more maturing uh, and maturing as a product. And so, yeah, we speak uh, about these products and uh, get a lot of positive feedback. These uh, user groups mostly are attended by, I think, 60 to 70 people. And yeah, it's going really well. And uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. That's great. Now, uh, you know, one question that I hear a lot, and I'd love to get your take as a new brand new MVP, like you just got your MVP, like when, when did the actual award come? Uh, I, did, I don't have it yet. So I oh, need to, oh, uh, okay. let me check. No, uh, brand, it's, it's, brand new. Yeah, brand, brand new. Yeah, since uh, the first of October, and I'm not even on the MVP side. So if you look me up, I'm checking it every day, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Find an MVP. I'm not. I'm not there yet. So uh, yeah, since the first of October, I need to get my reward kit, and uh, yeah, I've already uh, activated the, the traditional of unpacking video of opening up. The <laughs> I'm going to do that. Yes, because it's uh, it's 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 a little bit cringy, but it's, it's yeah, it's just a really special thing. I, I'm really impressed by your wall over there uh, behind yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cool. I just I had uh, this this year. I was. Uh, it's been ten years. Uh, yeah. Very so. cool. Congratulations. Yeah, it's very exciting to, to continue to get those. But uh, no, it, so I'm interested to hear kind of your thoughts too on, because a question that's asked is, well, like, well, how much do you feel like you have, do you feel uh, uh, to, to um, kind of, uh, you know, to talk about Microsoft technologies? Do you, to like, like MVPs were not out there just, uh, you know, shilling for promoting Microsoft, it's, you know, we're, we use them, we're passionate about them, but kind of what's your take on that? Like, uh, of, of like an MVP of like your role and what you've done over the last, at least the last year in representing the product and being, uh, you know, a, a voice for the product within the community. Uh, well, of course it's a voice for the product, but the, the main thing is that uh, when I started with Windows 10 Autopilot, uh, there was very few information out there. So there were a couple of guys who were blogging about it and um, I'm starting to create my own tricks, tips and tricks. And I thought, yeah, I'm grabbing all this information from the internet and I can share it myself too because I can not find some things and I'm creating things myself. And I thought maybe I could help other people with my, with my solutions. And that's where it started. And after you get more and more feedback about, uh, yeah, about these tips and tricks that you uh, post about, then yeah, it really goes from there, I think. And uh, it's, it's, it's really the starting point should be helping people and uh, helping technology professionals, professionals get b better at their, at their, uh, at their trade really. Yeah. So, but the, I think an important word that was just from missing from my description is that you're know, being an independent voice. So what does it mean to be an independent voice? for you know, these Microsoft solutions? Um, good question. Um, I think uh, that you could express your own feelings and your own take on how Microsoft products could be used and uh, how you could implement them and what the downsides and the upsides are from a certain solution. And, and that's where you can really advise some people whether you should go uh, for a certain product in a certain situation and when you should uh, for example, uh, go for Windows 10 Autopilot or uh, Azure Virtual Desktop and 
uh, people love to hear your uh, to hear thoughts about their situation, their scenario, and how it could help them to uh, make certain choices which will be uh, as good as they can for their users. Actually, yeah, well, that's it's really nice. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's a it's a great point to make for the people that have the questions that are out there, it, and that's a difference between there's you know the product teams, the product marketing teams at Microsoft are fantastic at going out there and advocating for the products that they help build, mm -hmm. you know, but you're getting that one sided view and MVPs provide that real world perspective on these solutions. We're practitioners in the areas where we have that specialty and we are familiar with competing products. So that's that, you know, I don't know how often you get questions about other competing platforms and and your experience with with that but how do you usually respond to that because look no matter what product area that you're in there are competing solutions uh, yeah. if, if there's not a product there are other like services the build it yourself solutions that companies have gone built which you're also then uh, you know usually mvps have experience with those things as well so how do you respond to some of those you know competitive questions uh, well, there is always the uh, the Azure Virtual Desktop versus VMware Horizon versus Citrix versus uh, just working on your on your on your own uh, laptop. But it's always it's not always a good fit for everyone. You know, your use case should fit the product, and you should not look for the product first and then check your use case. It's all about use case. It always has been. If you are uh, a really heavy uh, CAD user, uh, CAD uh, for the for the technology, uh, yeah, the, the the technical, I don't know how to call it in English, but you know what I mean. And um, yeah, if you have that use case, you need really good media redirection. Yeah, please pick Citrix. You know, there are certain use cases where you can, you, where you need to uh, advise products other than your own special speciality because it's 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 best for the customer. You know, the best the customer and their use case always come first. And if it's not a product that lies in my specialty, it's fine. They, I would rather see them have a good uh, solution instead of being a uh, using a solution that I built and, and that they don't that, that doesn't fit for them. You know, yeah, yeah. that's really my take on that. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, it, it's funny working for ISVs. Um, my, you know, historically, I had some uh, very angry salespeople at me. They're like, "Why are you recommending a competitor?" For that solution and like because our customer needs a product that we don't offer yes they compete with us in other areas we don't compete here and it's the best product i'm going to recommend that because that's what the customer needs and i think a lot of what you know what i was providing as an mvp was that again that independent voice even independent of what my company is i looked at it as with pride when a i would give a talk at a conference and somebody comes up and he's like, you know, from your presentation, like, I have no idea what your company does. I said, because I didn't talk about what my company does. <laughs> like, well, then what does your company do? I'm like, well, let me tell you what my company yeah. does. But I had a great, they were comfortable in having that conversation because I was being neutral. I was talking about, here's what the platform is. Here's what the business problem is. This is what customers need. Here's the gaps from existing solutions. And I said, that, and take a look at, you know, at, at, you know at, from the partner ecosystem of the solutions that are out there, it automatically, it, you don't need to hammer people over the head with like, this is what we do. And here's what, how I can help you around that, that it's, it's inferred, you know, in, you know, by being neutral in that, and that you are an expert in that you build the trust that they want to have those conversations about possible solutions. Then you can have the company you know, a uh, conversation with you where you're representing products and services. Yeah, exactly. It's always being a, a, the trusted advisor. And it's that, that means that you don't always recommend your own product because that, right. yeah, that, that couldn't be the case. If you're a trusted advisor and you only advise your own products, then you couldn't be on the seat as trusted advisor. So yeah, that's the story actually. Yeah. Well, that's, that's always, really that's also, and that's so true with us as MVPs and I'm sure you'll, as as you uh, you know are in the program where Microsoft doesn't want to just hear you know yes all the time to the MVPs and take what we've given you they want that feedback they want the pushback sometimes you know we need to do it in a constructive way but that's that's 
you know, um, and there, there are some, uh, you know, MVPs and non MVPs, just people in the community that don't quite get that part of it, that you, you can't go in hot. You can't go in angry with Microsoft because <laughs> Microsoft didn't do something that you think that they should be able to do. Yeah. But you have that conversation, you have, you get you're like, here's what we're experiencing. Here's what's happening with my customers and re representing the community back to Microsoft. So it very much is a, it's a two way thing. It's great to be a member of the program, the MVP program. There are great perks, benefits, insights that we have. Obviously it, it helps, it'll help you in your career by, you know, being you know known as, Hey, Microsoft trust you enough that they elevate you to this MVP because of the quality of the work that you've done. But it's also a great way for customers to know that I can talk to you and you can give this feedback of the gaps that we're seeing in the current products and offerings back to Microsoft and represent the community back to Microsoft. Yeah, certainly uh, I had a talk with a, with a potentially new customer today as well. And it was exactly the, the, the same experience if you, as, as you would describe it like now yeah that's uh when they say when uh, well the sales manager introduced me as a microsoft mvp because i was too modest to do so but they are like really okay then we're talking with a serious person right now so it's, it really gives that perks and always in the in the conversations as well so yeah uh i'm really humbled to, to join the program and i'm really liking it and uh yeah the feedback from the community is it's vast. It's it's really it, it's yeah. impressive. Yeah. It it's uh no. I mean it, it is the I mean the 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 two best perks out of being an MVP are number one just the association, the the community, and instantly you have a way to connect with these people all over the world, and and have those conversations. The secret for everybody else that's not an MVP is that pretty much all MVPs are very approachable anyway we're very social very well connected and we welcome like ask us questions reach out to us yeah that's like, no problem like yeah. like right don't be shy come to us with questions uh and and connect with us um but having the, the connectivity the other perk that i absolutely love highly recommend for you is when the in-person mvp uh summits happen again on microsoft campus in in the seattle area try to go in person like I, i'm sure they're going to try and do it's been virtual the last two times mm -hmm. and i'm sure they're going to try and do some flavor of hybrid when it's back in person that's in march right uh generally yeah so we'll generally see what, yeah we'll see what happens uh because microsoft campuses are still not open again but if mm -hmm. they're open and if they do it in person i highly recommend that you prioritize and try to make it over because i mean it, it you can't replace that in-person, you know, connection with the product teams, with the, the the executive leadership, with your fellow MVPs, and and you'll make connections that long after you've left the MVP program, you'll still have these friends and connections that you make through events like that. Yeah, I've, uh, I don't know. Do you know Mich Michel Leroy, also from uh, from the Amsterdam area? He is an uh, he is an uh, MVP in the Exchange program. Has written some books about it, and he he uh, all uh, he told me as well yeah you make friends for life uh in yeah. the mvp program yeah it's really yeah, awesome very much yeah. so well as always recommend for anybody any mvps that are out there i'm not just interviewing brand new mvps but long time existing mvps that uh you know let's let's talk your origin story here on this that's what the mvp buzz chat's all about getting to know fellow mvps across different uh focus areas around the world so well nails really appreciate your time today People that want to follow you, get in touch with you. What are the best ways to reach you through social and elsewhere? Um, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, GitHub. Um, follow my blog, nielscock.tech. Uh, tech. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I think you will mention me in the post so you can find I'll do me. that in all the blogs. So yeah, you better find us. If you're watching this out on YouTube, you can find it out at buckleyplanet.com as well. There's always a blog post that has all the links to all the social. So Niels, really appreciate your time today. It's uh, great meeting you and hope to see you maybe next year in person at that event. That would be very cool. Thanks for having me. Wow. Wow.